um, at some point when you either like tend animals long enough or you have enough of them at some point too, like, it's kind of weird, the whole playing God thing, but at some point you look at the health of the herd and it's not just about the one animal. Right. Um, and, and it's like, you know, th this one is sickly, this one um, is aggressive. You, it, you start to like be a breeder too and, and, and cultivate um, a herd that has the characteristics that, that work for you. Like, oh, this one's always breaking out of my fence line and causing me a bunch of grief over in the neighbor's barn. Yeah. Um, Hey Food Slayers, it's Michelle here from foodslaying.com and I'm making a quick video because this week we are talking to another farmer. I'm doing this farm series because I think it's really important. It's important to know who your local farmers are. It's important to know what's happening in the farming community and I think it's really interesting to hear about local farmers, what they're doing, why they're doing it and how it's benefiting us as consumers especially since we saw what happened in 2020 with the food supply chain. So this week I'm talking to uh, a collective of farmers, uh, two women actually that are a part of a larger collective in Sebastopol, California, and they, they live on a property that is, is historically um, indigenous property and so it's really interesting to hear about what they're doing and and how they've come together to do the work of farming and community events and conservation water sequestration they're healing the land they're grazing animals and I'm gonna be talking to Tamra Costa and Aubrey Mays of Green Valley Farm and Mill in Sebastopol and I'm really excited to have them on because Tamra Costa is the author of Farmer Jane which is a book that came out in 2010 2010 hopefully you will tune in this week to listen in to that podcast episode and hopefully you listened in last week because last week I talked to Farmer Chippy who is a the founder of the Plantation Park Heights Urban Farm in Baltimore, Maryland. And what's great about the work that he's doing, if you haven't listened to it, is that he's helping diminish, if not completely eliminate, food insecurity for the residents of the city of Baltimore. And what's awesome about that is that he's giving away free food boxes. So if you live in Baltimore, check out the Plantation Park Heights Urban Farm and talk to Farmer Chippy because he's out there doing the work. He's he's doing amazing things, you know, installing an outdoor kitchen and teaching people about healthy food because, you know, if you don't know that the health outcomes that we are experiencing, not just collectively, but individually in a lot of communities like Baltimore in these food deserts, um, those health outcomes are significantly more obvious than they are in communities where there is access to healthy food, where there are grocery stores. Um, you know, I was on the board of the community foods market, which was the people's community market back when I was on the board, and I was on the board for nine years, just helping to eliminate the food desert that was West Oakland, California. And so, you know, that was an, a really, really important project. And, you know, at current as of the recording of this video, it has now become available. The, the grocery store that we were working on for that project is open, is feeding people, is making healthy food available for people who live in West Oakland. And that is an amazing, amazing project. I'm so proud to be or to have been a part of that the growth of that project um, and so you know it is really important to talk to farmers talk to people producing food talk to retailers and and look at the health outcomes in some of the communities where people who are facing food insecurity every single day where they live here's my opinion on that there is no reason for food insecurity anywhere there's enough food for all of us everywhere and if you don't have access to food, then you can grow your own. And that is a real viable thing that we can do. So, that said, 
I hope you listen into this week's episode with Tamra and Aubrey and support their farm if you live in California. Next week, we are going to be talking to Jana Short, who is, uh, she's a, a mindset coach and a wellness coach, and she's kind of been through the fire, and she's got some really great stories, but we're talking to her specifically about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming in Food Marketing, which I think is really pervasive. And it's really important because we are influenced by what we see, what we hear. You know, our brains don't discern that one thing is good or one thing is bad. I mean, obviously, we have opinions and we make decisions about what we buy and our purchasing habits. But a lot of that is influenced subliminally through NLP. And so we're going to be talking to her about that. So make sure to listen in next week. Um, And I thank you for listening in every week. Thank you so, so much for listening into the podcast. Thank you for subscribing to the podcast. Thank you to all of my um, Patreon supporters. You know, what's going to be happening now, if you want to support this channel, I will be releasing the video of the podcasts every week only to Patreon supporters. So if you want to see the videos of the podcasts, then make sure to head on over to patreon.com forward slash food slain and, and be a supporter, support this work, support local farmers, support them by listening and sharing episodes, sign up for the newsletter so that you get exclusive podcast updates. And of course, subscribe to this channel, please. It really helps get the word out. Let's continue the conversation. And until next time, remember to eat clean, eat healthy, love your food, and I'll see you on the other side of the plate. Ciao.